Jado, you have chickens, right? You do. Because I know you've come and given eggs and sold eggs. And tell me something. The gospel just talked about a mother hen who gathers her chicks. Have you ever witnessed that if there is a threat in the hen house? You have. Can you tell me what the mother hen does? Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> does she? No. And she gives like a warning, right? And they all come and get underneath her. And they all come and get underneath her and they're protected. I like that. I like that. That's a good visual. You know, for those of us that are in the 40-day challenge, we've been reading parable after parable after parable as Jesus tries to explain why he speaks in parables. And it's been fascinating as we have stepped into Luke over the last two days to be able to go through Matthew and Mark and now into Luke. Thank you, Jado, for letting me put you on the spot. Well, this is our second week of Lent, and we have encountered readings that, with imperative force, charge us to wait for the Lord. Our waiting, you see, is either going to restore, outlast, or transform us. Psalm 27 speaks of it. Please listen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though any army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze of the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above mine enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. And your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your ways, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foe, for false witness rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. During the season of Lent, we wait to see the world restored. We wait to outlast affliction and we wait for God to transform us. We are encouraged, even though from the midst of trouble, to seek the Lord in whom our covenant promise resides. In the beautiful readings that Louise gave us this morning, beginning with Genesis, Abram waits for the Lord 
while he actively seeks to understand his suffering and outlast his and Sari's infertility. He believes the Lord when the odds are not in his favor. In the Jewish study Bible, it says faith does not mean believing in spite of evidence. It means trusting profoundly in a person, in this case our personal God, who has reiterated his promise. For Abram, part of that trust comes from recalling how God has been with him on his travels from Ur. It questions how we can share stories in our communities about what God has already done in our own lives. How does sharing help us see God in the midst of moments of deep and terrifying darkness that we may encounter? Well, I believe that during Lent, it provides us a comp contemplative time for this type of sharing and vulnerability. Paul, when in prison, wrote his supporters in Philippi to encourage them in the faith and ensure they do not fall prey to a false gospel. He commands them to stay firm in the Lord. Paul, by contrast, those who stand firm to those for whom their God is in the belly, a picture of immediate gratification. Paul promotes the kind of waiting that leads to transformation that comes through the conforming of Jesus Christ. He wants them to have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus rather than living in the ways of the world or setting their minds on earthly things as Peter, as others, and as we often do. Paul hopes to shape how they will think, how we will think about and view the world in light of the cross. Like Christ's humiliation becomes his glory through his obedience to the cross. So too should the Philippians live in obedience to God, even in difficulty, clinging to the promise that they too will be transformed in the cross for God's glory. Do you remember last Sunday, Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness? to not trust God, and to ditch his mission. Now, the well-meaning Pharisee tempt him to abandon his mission in Jerusalem in this week's gospel by running from Herod, who has already beheaded John the Baptist. With this opportunity in Lent for self-reflection, self-examination. This should be, could be a time for us to adopt new disciplines and perhaps new ways of serving, echoing our baptismal call to discipleship, which is trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made and work for justice and peace. Not only should we remember that Jesus keeps seeking us out to gather us in, but that he is at work in the world, and he calls us likewise to do the same. Who are the vulnerable in our church? Who are the marginalized in Owasso, the state of Michigan, the world? Who are the scattered and the weak or the disfranchised? And how can we, through the Holy Spirit, face the foxes of this world to protect, like Jado's mother hen, her brood? A gracious God made a covenant with Abram while he was asleep and maybe even dozing through God's promises. A loving Jesus longs to gather up her children, you and I, 
and bring about salvation on God's terms in spite of Herod. Prophet, murderers, and doubting, failing, falling, fleeing disciples, past or present. God's disciples are chicks who are peckish or hungry for the gospel, but they're vulnerable to false prophets and an easy way out. Is that us? Immediately after the covenant, Abram and Sari take matters into their own hands and don't rely on God. The Philippians are humiliated and struggling to live as Christians. David the psalmist is under attack but clinging to his God, his salvation and fortress. How do we this Lenten season trust God and allow ourselves to be gathered in? How do we care for the vulnerable? And continue to be formed as people of the cross. As the body of Christ, we are being offered this intentional season to slow down. To consider our faith. To study the word. To pray. To fast. To give generously. And turn again, always, each day our face toward God. Amen.